We know retirement is different for everyone. Some have it all figured out and some are living the most amazing third phase of life, but many are actually struggling. When Jody says, or we say struggling, you know, they're getting by, they're getting by and each day might be okay, but it really isn't what they imagined. Back- well, what? days might be better than okay, but stringing a few of those together is difficult. Right. Is that what right. you think? I, I That's do, what we hear. I do think that. And I also, again, we imagined our retirement years ago as really sitting on the beach, having pina coladas and traveling around the world. And we tried that for 12 months and it didn't work. It just wasn't enough for us. So today we're going to talk a little bit about some things that might might help you. You know, I'm sure you'd, you'd all agree we deserve, after all the years of working, the best retirement ever. And it can and should be. So today we're going to try to help you with some items to make sure you don't fail. We're going to talk to you about five areas of your life that you really need to be aware of. But before we go any further, particularly for those of you that are new here, we want to introduce ourselves. My name is Mark Rollins. And I'm Jody Rollins. And we started Retirement Transform in 2017, not only for us and for you, but for the 10,000 people turning 65 every day. Now, we don't focus on anything financial, but rather we focus on lifestyle, health, relationships, and more. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button below and also the notification button so you get notified when our new content comes out. So let's jump into the five critical areas of your life that you don't want to ignore. So the first one, you cannot ignore your health. And you probably have for years. Well, probably, I don't know about probably, but maybe Maybe. we know people that do. But when we say health, we we mean your mental health and your physical health. For me, this is core to my success in retirement. And I, I would say it's probably core to you too because we always start our day around health. Some Mental type of movement. and physical. Some it's, type of movement, some type of meditation, right? Yeah, because that just gets us grounded for the day. But it's, but it's more than that. It's also checking in with your medical providers, right? Well, it is. Right? It is. You know, I, I was talking to a friend the other day who I saw that his wife passed away on Facebook back in September. But I didn't know the story about it. So I finally got a hold of him and I had a conversation with him last week. And they were married for... I don't know, 40 years. And he told me that she was a rock. She was healthy. She just, everything about her was great. And one day in August of last year, she felt terrible, ended up in the hospital. And it turned out her sugar numbers were, I don't know, 1,500. I don't, I don't know what the high number is. I know I was pre-diabetic for a while, so I was really careful with that. But she was off the charts. And honestly, it was just downhill from there. And unfortunately... In 60 days, she passed away. And that, that was unheard of to me. But here's, here's the part that really just got me very upset. While she felt healthy, she had never had an annual physical. I mean, folks, if you haven't seen your doctor in a year or two or three, you have to go. I mean, it's and, critically important to baseline, right? right? As you're moving through this phase of life, especially if you've got a vision for yourself 20 or 30 years out. Right. You need to be working on that and getting the information today. So, you know, I would say where to start, you know, pay attention to how you feel. Get your doctor visits up to date. Yeah. Move your body. Move your body. Get up and walk 20 minutes a day. You'd be surprised if the first thing you do in the morning after a glass of water is go out the door and walk for 20 minutes. 10 minutes one way and then you come back. If you want more information on this thing, we're going to drop links to some videos down below where we go into depth on your physical wellness. So the first one, don't ignore your physical wellness and where you are. The second one is just don't ignore your relationships. Now you have the time. You know, we suggest even making a list, you know, make a list of those colleagues you were close with during your career, or maybe some people that left before you left, or those that are still there and are are about to leave and enter this phase as well. Yeah, what we've done with that is we've made these lists, and for those who've retired, we stay in touch, and, you know, we try to get together when we can, but the younger people that are still there, it gives us a chance to mentor them, 
that always feels good when you can talk with an upcoming um, junior executive, I don't know the right word, but someone in their 30s or 40s who could really benefit from your advice. So I think it's really good to get those folks on a list too and check in with them once in a while. Yeah, and then there's more folks you can put on a list to kind of add richness to this. You know, there's your community and your your church or, you know, faith-based, you know, place, your or, well, yeah. clubs where you're volunteering. Or start a club, start a coffee group with uh, a bunch of guys, or in your case, women. Um, you could do a knitting you, group. You wouldn't want me to start a coffee group with a bunch of guys? No. I could. What about a knitting group? It. You do knitting, I, I don't, do, you don't I wish do I knitting? Knit, click, click, knitted, click. but I don't. Well, I think the point is creating communities in retirement is important. There are some already there, clubs, church, volunteering, but you also can create your own like-minded people in this phase. So you don't want to ignore your relationships. You don't. Okay. That was the second one. What's the third one? The third one, and while we can't help you with this and we don't do this, it is critical to your retirement and that's making sure you have a financial plan. Don't ignore your finances. You can't just assume everything's going to be okay. You really need to have a financial planner to give you a clear picture of your finances. You need to have a budget, how much money you can live on each year. That would just ease your, ease your, not pain, ease your... Tension or stress. Yeah, with your partner. I mean... Well, but really here we're talking about non-financial plan items. You know, we don't know what your life plan is right now or what your vision is in retirement, but you should have your finances in order in order to support the plan. Right. So plan or no plan, we came up with a phrase. Well, here's the thing. Um, You need a financial plan. We don't do that. But you also need a plan in retirement. And whether you have a plan or not, you're living a certain retirement. And we did come up with this phrase yesterday talking to a client that, you know, they're not really happy where their retirement is and they don't have a non-financial plan. So we said to them, well, your current non-financial retirement plan is perfectly designed to provide you with the retirement that you're living. And they said, well, I don't have a plan. I said, well, let me say this again. Your current non-financial retirement plan is perfectly designed to provide you with the retirement you're living. So without a plan, you're just living day to day, moment to moment, and that's not good. And some people would say, and we have gotten pushed back, that that they're happy with that. And that's all we want to hear is that you're happy with where you are. But we've all planned our entire life up until now. Why stop? That's the thing that we don't get. Why, you know, you, you planned all your education, your career, your marriage, your kids, if you had it, owning a home, buying and selling homes. You've been planning for 40 or 50 years. What do the next 30 years look like for you? It's true. And you know, what Mark and I did was we developed our five pillars and started with visions around those. So as you mentioned, our mental health and our physical well-being, and then our spouse partner relationship and other relationships, Mm -hmm. as well as wisdom sharing, and maybe even the sixth pillar, building our community. So we really built visions around those. The other thing you could do, where to start, is join us in our mastermind in January. You know, that's where we will go deep into each of the pillars and help you with that. And we only hold that once a year. You can buy our online course now. You can go to the website and, you know, we'll leave that link below. But we also think if you want to be coached through this process for just a little bit more money, we're actually going to do it live for um, January, do it once a year. So you might want to think about doing that if you don't have a plan and your retirement could use a little spruce up, let's call it. So the third item was pay attention to your financial plan as well as your non-financial plan. So what's the fourth? The fourth one is don't assume you can just wing it. And I really want you to take this phrase seriously. You you shouldn't think about winging it every day and every week and every month for the next 20 or 30 years. When did that work out well for you? I'm sure you never winged it during your career. Right? Did you? I didn't, no. No, you did wouldn't you? have gotten sometimes. I think you, maybe you did. <laughs> <laughs> did not. And you didn't wing it having kids thinking, yeah. well, everything will be fine. Right. The, the next 20 or 30 years of your life is valuable. 
It's um, it's worth the your, input of your the plan. time affluent. You now have time. Right. Don't squander it. Right. Right. It's it's worth the input. Okay. To plan. So and the fifth thing is don't ignore your skills and talents that you gained over all those years. Use them in this phase of life to gain your fulfillment or your purpose. You know all that we've both learned. You know when we left our career. Um, the last thing we were thinking of was starting a business like that, like this, but it evolved and here we are. And now, you know, we absolutely love it. And we use the skills and talents we learned speaking, getting organized, whatever it was to help others. We were both great coaches during our careers. So we flipped that into retirement. You could do the same thing. You know, my dad, when he retired, he packed up all of his experiences, all of his stories, and he put it in a box, put a bow on it and stuck it on a shelf in the garage. We're not doing that, no. and you shouldn't either. This is our time. We need to make it fun and also create a great balance in your life. You know, our retirement life has things like golf and travel and downtime on top of our five pillars that I mentioned earlier. I think you can do that too. So we hope you enjoyed this. Do us a favor and please share it with your friends. And also subscribe by clicking the subscribe button and also click the notification button so that you get notified when our new video comes out every Wednesday at four o'clock. And finally, join our free Facebook community. The link is in the notes below. Thanks for listening and we look forward to being with you again.